Okay, so um, now we're all going to play. <laughs> so play time. Yeah, it's going to be play time. So let's, let's open up After Effects together and just get our, our hands dirty here. Um, now, how many people are like uh, Mac people and they're just like, oh my god, I'm working on the PC, I'm like slumming it today. Anybody? So let's look for her on Mac. <laughs> What do you mean you're Kirk? Are you not Kirk doesn't know what to do. I don't know. Why see. Why you see this thing down doing? here? That's how Bill Gates wants to start this. Right there. Yeah. It's called the start menu. And if you can see that, I love how this boy and Kirk. It's so cool. So you go start all programs. And um, now this is in ITT's little world, right? So this won't be like this at your computer, but. It's under VC programs, that's a visual communication. So the main thing is we just all can, I want to make sure we can all find After Effects first. Everybody see where that was? And uh, Misha and Dale and Gary can help if anybody's like, oh my god, I'm lost. Happens all the time. So I gave you this you know, incredible amount of handouts. I'm probably going to refer to it off the you if you need to. Um, I'm gonna, I, I realize that we just need to get into this in kind of a fun way and kind of build up, right? And um, Gary actually pointed out some really neat things to you about making a comp and stuff like that. We're just going to go through those steps and, and move towards it. I mean, basically, I'm going to take this stuff here and I'm just sort of going to sort of spontaneously build with you guys. So open up After Effects. Um, one of the funny things is that these tips of the day are actually good when you're starting out. I and mean, I ignore them now, but I remember actually reading them going like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. So we're going to go new composition. And we're going to hang out here for a minute. Now, does yours look like mine, you guys? HDTV and all that. Let's see if we're in the same place. Let's see what you all have. Go. Does it look like that? Okay. I wasn't sure whether that was a default or from last time. Let's just make it so it's HDTV. Um, we've got square pixels. And see what says oh. see what says lock aspect ratio, we're gonna keep that on. And just to because these screens are so darn low res, let's make the height seven two zero and hit a tab. So it should be width twelve eighty, height seven twenty. It's 29.7 frames per second, and over here duration is uh, six seconds. What you say width was? Um, width is 1280. And if you leave lock aspect ratio on, George, yeah. you change height to 720. Then, yeah. and I can see that that's sort of hard to read. And um, and here, this is the background color. We'll leave that as black. Everybody good so far? I pity That's people who are facing cool. that way. Like, Kirk, you have the worst seat. 720? HDTV. Yeah. So it's a 1280 okay. by 720 square pixels, 2997. Duration down there is six. I just want to, I'm not going to change this, but I want to point out with all the little typing in of, um, you know, sending colons and all that stuff. Don't do this, but I just want to demonstrate. If I typed in 10, zero, zero, and hit a tab, so you would go to 10 seconds. Six, zero, zero, tab, that's six seconds. We're just leaving it at six seconds. Six? Yeah, yeah we're just leaving it at six. Six, zero, zero. That's good? Six, zero, zero. Six, yeah, six, zero, zero, zero is the same as, as just doing all this with six seconds. We're going to hit OK. And um, it should look something like that, right? So it's got so a whole lot of nothing so far. New composition? So I'm going to walk you through the new comments now. Oh, yeah. No, down here the duration. So, so After Effects thinks in terms of projects and compositions. So <coughs> you only have one project open at a time, right? But you can have a gajillion compositions inside it and <coughs> compositions inside of compositions and all that. So we have the comp right here. And um, we're going to put some stuff in it, but before we do, Let's save our stuff, okay? So let's go File, Save, and let's put it somewhere. Now I'm just going to put my stuff on the desktop, and for Mac people, we just click on the word desktop. I actually have a folder here of my stuff. Um, we have the name. 
Yeah, just give it some sort of a name, like a play or whatever. Play. I'm just going to call my play AE because that's what it is. And um, so we have this comp. Down here is our timeline. Let's get comfortable with this. Let's let's bring something into After Effects so we at least have the experience of importing one thing. We didn't put videos on the desktops, but Misha was kind of awesome, and he put this little piece of Photoshop art that I did on everybody's desktop except for Melissa's. <laughs> yeah, that's what I get. And me, uh, Misha, you didn't don't have your um, a floppy of a uh, flash drive, do you? I give you one. Excuse me. Oh, it's gone. I put it on my desk. Gary, you don't have one for. I I have mine. Do you need one? I uh, just so Melissa can get the. I don't have the start thing on mine. Oh, his email. Oh well, she can yeah. take. Uh, you can take me. Okay, email it. I'll just yeah. watch tonight. Oh, we're gonna get you. Oh yeah. Up. No, you can. Yeah, Misha, Misha, can, Misha can copy put his it on to you. That one, Misha. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Um, if anybody sees a flash drive around, let me know. So, um, I, the way I like to import stuff is just this. This is the project panel right here. This, start, this will get loaded up with stuff as you work. And so the easiest way to do it, of course, you can go File, Import, or Control-I. But this big gray area, if you just left-click, double-click, you'll go right to um, an Import File dialog box. And somewhere around here, I've got this neat file that Misha gave me. And it's called um, Star Crop. Okay, actually, We're looking for that the right desktop. there. It should just be on the desktop, yeah. Star Crop? Yeah. Okay. Oh, is that a video? No, it's just it's a, a little PSD? Photoshop file. It should be just a little PSD oh, file, oh, yeah. It's a Photoshop file. Just a little Photoshop file. And um, the super cool thing about After Effects and Photoshop is, you know, they're kindred souls, right? So After Effects can bring in a layered Photoshop file, and you can select different layers and all that great stuff. In this particular example, um, we're just, let's see, I think we're bringing it in as, as composition. Let's see if that's the right thing to do. So let's select, instead of footage, composition. Now here's the deal. You can retain layer sizes or just crop to the largest layer size. I think we're going to do that. Hit open. And then it's going to bring us to another dialog box where it says, well, you sure you want it to be a composition? And hold off on here for a second because I don't you click this, okay? I'm just going to click it. I'm going to make sure I bought in the right thing. I actually want to demonstrate to you what's going on with this. I bought it in as a as a composition, which means every single layer in this file came in individually. But we don't really need to, these are the various layers, right? So I'm going to um, throw that away by just hitting delete. How did you delete that? You can just hit the just delete. Hit the delete yeah, or, Kirk, the other way you can do it is you can also um, drag things into the little trash can right here. Or just hit the trash can. So I'm going to go back in and get back to where you guys were. I'm going to go back into star.psd, star crop.psd, and this time I'm just going to make it be footage because I don't really need those layers in this case, okay? So I'm going to say, well, yeah, make it footage. Now, before I bring it in, I just want to point out some kind of cool stuff for, because I know a lot of you guys are from graphic arts backgrounds. Um, you can bring in all those drop shadows and everything else. You have all those bevels. They can come in, okay? This live Photoshop 3D thing, I think, is on the way out in 6, by the way. So we're going to go, okay, as footage, rather. Make it, make it footage, yeah. Merge layers. We're going to go, okay. okay. So now we got this little guy. And um, let's kind of start building out something here. Um, let's just throw him in here so we've got something going on. I can throw it in there, okay? Or I can throw it down here. There's two ways to put it in. Okay, so I've got an object right now. Now, this guy is um, 2D, and just take note of that right now. He's only a 2D object. If I drop down this little twirly, we call him, and look at transforms, we're going to kind of dig into um, what's going on with After Effects here. Did he come in okay? He should. There's a problem over here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only razzing her. You told her. me to delete it. <laughs> and I deleted it. By the way, Nisha is really good at this program. He might be 12. But, wow. 
Don't let that fool you. Okay. Now, now we're, here's a composition window. Let me I'll help get you guys unconfused a little bit. Right here, um, there's a toggle of a transparency grid, and I don't know if you noticed, but um, what Gary left me with this on, and for a second I was like, oh, and I was like, okay, so that's a transparency grid right there. Um, I'm all, and what that's showing is the background. There's only one thing here. So if you're a Photoshop person, you might be saying, well, what makes that black there, right? And it's almost like a background color. And if you ever wanted to change that, you'd go, we're not going to change it now, but I want to show you where it is. Composition, composition settings right here. That's that background color. Okay, if you need to change that. We're actually going to do something a little bit better than having just a flat color. Now, um, Anchor point is very strange in this program. I'm going to do and then I'm, 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 going to, I'm going to undo. If I did that, that changes the anchor point. I'm going to control Z for sure because I really am happy that I have the anchor point in the middle of this. Okay, because anchor points are a little bit strange in After Effects. Um, position, same sort of deal. You can drag over these numbers and they'll spin. A little tiny double headed arrow comes up and you can wobble that guy up and down. So it's really sort of handy. Rotation, same deal. I'm just spinning these numbers. Okay, so I'm just looking at moving things around. See that here? Yeah, here's how this works. Um, if you hover over any number, these little yellow numbers, watch what happens to the magic finger. We get this guy going. The, um, the double arrow. The double arrow. Just click it. And another big one. If you left it there, those open. Um, it's just gonna stay here. Here. Yeah, we're going to do a lot of command Z yeah, control Z. Yeah. Control Z. Yeah. Just keep the same one. No, just the triangle. Okay. Oh, you already did that. Yeah. So we didn't make any keyframes yet. We're just looking at the issues. These are called the transform so attributes. Now right? I can go over those you know, okay. numbers. See how it changes your. Uh, now we're going to do more now doing and undoing, right? Going, uh, and, and move so this is the this is the king of tools, the move tool. And doing, the shortcut is V, and you use it a lot. Tools. So now I'm moving, right? I'm just going to move and then undo. Okay, a lot of control Z. So there's move has its own tool, and what you'll notice is the position values change when I move. I'm sorry about the um, the projection is kind of bad, but you can see on your computer that. The, the position moves are, uh, uh, attributes are changing. Now there is also a rotation tool, it's right up here. The rotation tool has this strange shortcut of W, so we used to call it rotation. Okay, but I, in six, I think they changed it to R, thank goodness. So then that's giving me rotation. I can see my rotation values are changing. One of the things that sort of throws people at first with After Effects is why does it say zero times 90 degrees or something? Well, you could spin it twice. In between two keyframes. Okay, so um, so that's sort of fun, but it doesn't give me, me my Z depth. So let's click on um, this little box here. It's like a little cube. And now all of a sudden things have totally changed, and I've got more numbers. Okay, so um, I'm going to want to move this thing back in space. So let's see what we've got. We've got anchor point. Yeah, now that's got a Z. Dimension position now has a Z dimension, so does scale. And something called orientation, which we'll kind of learn about as we go along, and then separate values for X, Y, and Z. So let's sort of fiddle faddle with these a little bit. Let's look at position first. Let's just try dragging. Oops, you see what just happened? <laughs> I crashed. Okay, let's try dragging um, on Z and push the position back. So it's not so big. Hey, did you see what happened, Gary? I just no, touched no, no, it, and it just, it just, oh, wow. that was the fastest crash I think I've ever seen. It just like disappeared. What does it say to you? Like, it didn't say much. Start off that PSD. There it is right there. Okay, so that guy's right there. And um, when you drop him here, by the way, he lands right on uh, X, Y, and Z. So I have, I've got the. The um, 3D um, toggle on, or, or switch they call it. And so here, here's the deal with this. Yeah, let's see if I can make it crash again. <coughs> My position, I just drag back so the number increases, the Z value increases as it goes back in space, okay? But now check this out. 
going to save a lot because of that crash. Watch, watch this, you guys. You can you can roll your middle mouse in and out to zoom in and out of the um, the preview uh, window for the composition. Okay. And look at this guy. This guy's your friend. This is the uh, I'm used to calling it the gizmo. Gary and me should probably have the correct term or Dale. Um, I call it the gizmo because that's what's called in 3ds Max. But the point is now it's got X red, Y green, and blue for Z. Okay. So I'm in I'm in the I'm in position, but I'm also in the move tool, which is probably more important. And so check this out. I can move it on X and Y, right? And watch what you see the little uh, where it says X or Y, it's giving me a readout. So the basic idea about this is this. You know when you drive your car, you're not pushing the car. You're, dr you're really dealing with the steering wheel. So this is, think of this thing as a steering wheel. So I'm looking at it, I'm going like, well, I want to push it on um, uh, Z, for example. Hover over and watch Z light up. I mean, over there, there's X, there's Y, and then there's Z. So I, when I'm pushing on Z, now it's moving back on Z. Incidentally, if you hold shift, it'll move faster, right? If you hold control, it'll be very small incremental moves. Now, the only reason I said it is because right now I'm noticing it's kind of dragging, so if I hold shift, it kind of moves back fast. When I hover over the position numbers, it just moves my particular circle star to the left and to the right. Scale sends it front and back. Is it? Well, no, yeah. Let's make sure you've got that 3D switch on yours. You have yeah, that on right there. Yeah. You do have it on because yeah. it should push it back. So hover over it here with. Is, um, here is it. Oh, here what? Here's what? Because you're on rotation, so oh. you want to get on move, the move tool. So V and W are your um, shortcuts for movement and, and rotation. So V and so every once in a while, if things aren't working right, look up here and make sure you're in move. Okay. Where's move? Oh. Uh, move is this tool right here. And where did 3D switch? The 3D switch is right here. Interesting. Yep. So you want to make sure that's on. If that's not on, you will not see this X, Y, Z. 3D switch. So listen, did you get that file? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. All right. So let's try now. Um, let's try rotation and then undo. So now we're going to go to the rotation tool and hover over some of these axes and see. So if I hover over um, Z, I'm going to get that. And I'm going to undo, and then if I hover over Y and I see Y light up, I've got that. And um, with X, I've got that. This is pretty good. You can see with the way this works is if you flip something all the way around, you're going to see the back of it. Right. Okay. So I've got a little guy in here. Let's sort of move him over a little bit, and let's sort of build out an environment um, briefly here. And oh, by the way, you want to control us the fair amount with this. So I've got my guy. And um, I can um, drop down or close up my, um, my transforms. I'll, I'll just show you a couple of shortcuts. If I hit P, for example, I'll go right to position. If I hit S, I'll go right to scale. And um, oddly enough, R goes to rotation, even though W is for rotation for the tool up there. And if you want to just collapse it all down, you can just hit the little twirly. Um, the reason there's something called material options down here, which wasn't there before we turned it into 3D, is this has stuff to do with um, whether it receives light or whether it casts shadows, etc. So it's kind of cool. But um, we won't need those right now. But just take note that if, if 3D is off, you will not have the material options because it's not able to have that kind of interaction with cameras and lights and all that. Okay. so. This is something that you're going to really do a lot in After Effects, which is to lay a so, uh, put a solid layer in for a lot of different reasons. And for us, we're just going to put a gradient um, in the background just to kind of build this up. So let's go up to the layer menu, okay? Layer. Oops. Now, layer. Okay. Make sure your um, comp uh, tab is active. And the reason I know one is active is because I see this little yellow border around it. And let's activate that, comp one, and we're going to go layer, new, and look at what's over here. We've got text, solid light, camera, blah, 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 no logic, which is what we're sort of headed towards, shapes, etc. By the way, you can also sort of launch a connection with an uncreated Photoshop file here. And there's something called adjustment layers, which are similar to Photoshop adjustment layers. 
we're going to go uh, layer new solid. And we've got the um, some questions about what kind of solid that is that we want. And if yours does not say 1280 by 720, you can click on this little button that says Make Comp Size. And it doesn't matter what color it is because we're going to change it. We're going to put a gradient ramp on it. We're going to go OK. OK, so I've got a background color. And I just want to do something that's not just a solid color for the background. Now, you notice it covered up my image, which is sort of like a bummer. But it's not really. This is just like Photoshop layers. You're just going to drag it down. We're actually going to cover up this color entirely. So everything's looking from the top down. How many people um, are not that familiar with Photoshop? Okay. So Photoshop works like this. It's looking, always looking from the top down. So this is, well, if you're all green, I can't see through you, right? So what we're going to do is we just drag this down and watch for the black line. And that's telling me, oh, that's going to be under star crop PSD. And I've got this and the star. Okay. Okay. This is good. Okay. So don't forget to do your control S's a lot. What we're going to do is, is do our first effect. Okay. So um, let me show you where effects are and how to kind of find effects. So I want to be prepared to be sort of over or underwhelmed, depending on your mood. <laughs> depending on your mood. If I, so I've got effects are, in general terms, for the specific layer that's selected. So at this point, now that we've got two layers, you also have to be aware of what layer is actually active, right? So I've got this layer active here on the bottom. And mine happens, this sort of is auto naming here something related to the color that I picked, right? And by the way, there's little column dividers here, and you can always uh, move them around if you need to. And I want to put an effect on it. First, I want to show you the two places to find effects. Up here, if I have a layer selected and I go effect, I can sort of have an idea um, how many effects there are. And I did this crazy thing that I probably never should have been at Austin School of Film. We had this kids camp. Um, in fact, one of the kids didn't come tonight. His name was Ryan. And um, we kind of went through every single one of these effects, uh, all the color correction ones and all the distortions. Uh, I, it was a distortion, so he went through smear and ripple pulse and all these crazy things. But the reality is you might use you know, very few of these. What we want to do is find something called a ramp, which is like a gradient, right? A ramp is another term for a gradient. And instead of trying, for me, instead of me trying to remember whether it's on, under generate or perspective or whatever, actually I do see it there, it's under generate. Let me show you how to find things faster over effects and presets. If you know even one word of the name of the um, of the effect, you can just start writing it there. Just type RAM, and it showed up. And once I I can find it, um, all I have to do is drag to the layer that I'm um, working on. So I can drag RAM to here, which would look different than that, right? I'm gonna put it on that, or I can drag it right to the solid down here. So now I've got a ramp all of a sudden, which is pretty good. I want to change it, though, and make, Misha's going to recognize this, because it's a little bit like um, one of the basic trainings in how to do a co-pilot. We're going to make a radial ramp that spreads out from the center, OK? So up here, um, I can take my ramp and change it to a radial ramp instead of a linear ramp. But I have a slight problem because the center of it's here, and I don't like the color. We want to make it like a deep blue or green and spread out to a black from the center, OK? So here, this, these two things here control the colors from the start of the ramp, which is black now, and the end, which is white currently. We're going to change it. But first, let's change the position of it. If you, it's sort of hard to see, but there's a little circle up there. And you can drag that down. Now, sometimes, we kind of get into trouble because we'll accidentally move the solid, which we don't want to do, right? So if that's happening to you, if you just click on this little target here, you can move it around. So I just sort of, you know, this isn't, this isn't science, so I don't, I don't, I'm not really that worried about whether it's exactly in the middle or not, right? And then the end of the ramp is the same sort of deal. It's actually hiding there, so I can spread it out, right? But if, again, you have a problem and you start moving the solid, you can just click on a little crosshair and put that approximately where you want it. And then you can always, you can always move these 
um, you, you know, you can always slide over with that little hand with the arrow thing over one of those numeric values if you want to. Then I'm just going to make the start color a deep uh, green and the end color black. So I'm just going to click in the swatch for start color, maybe make that some dark green. And then the end color, I'm just going to jam that right into the corner of the um, color picker and hit OK. Something like that. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And the beauty of it is you can always change it. Right, if I want to make this dark for whatever reason, I can always bring that down. Good so far? Right. So, um, let's see how we're doing here. Um, Where's the undo button? The undo button <laughs> is <laughs> edit, huh? undo. There, there is a control history Z. here, by the way, which is pretty cool. Control. Um, so just control Z, control Z, control Z is your undo. Okay, I'm in control Z, don't think you do. Okay, good. Yeah, go too far. Yeah, so um, there's also like a history right here. So you sort of go to where the, the last thing that looked good was. <laughs> so, <laughs> you okay? Yes. Okay, if you're ever really desperate, there is a file revert here. I just saved someone's grayed out. Okay, so we're going to make a little nested comp and uh, try to move a camera around kind of quick. Okay, so let's move, let's make sure your star crop is moved over a little bit. And let's kind of, um, let's see how we're going to do this. hope this is going to work. Um, I know what to do. I do know what to do. Let's take that star crop and go layer precompose. What we're going to do is make a little logo here. It's going to be, this is a fake, fake logo, and it's going to be your business name right here. So uh, hopefully I'm, do, I'm doing this a little bit backwards because you, I probably shouldn't have made this 3D yet. But let me go ahead, let, allow me to do this and make sure I do it flawlessly before you do it, okay? Then I'll do it and we'll do it together. So just hang back for a minute. I'm going to take my starcrop.psd and I'm going to go layer precompose. So just sort of watch this and don't do it yet. Make sure I do it without a problem. I'm going to call this logo comp. Okay. And um, I'm going to say leave all attributes. Make sure I get this right. Double click. Okay, let's, let's do it. We're going to do it the right way. Let's, um, we messed around with the position of this. We're going to undo that from um, 3D. So we're going to take that so it's no longer 3D. Okay. I'm going to take my crop, my uh, star crop, and I'm going to scale them down. So I'm moving my, my, um, I'm moving my star and scaling them down. So I'm gonna, I, I did something and then I undid it, so I want to make sure I didn't lose you guys. I'm going to take my um, star, I took him out of 3D, and then I had to move his position and scale to get him there, which is a good exercise for you guys to do probably anyway. Then what I'm going to do is type my name here and make it a pre-comp. So let me make sure nobody got lost with that. I, got, I took it out of 3D, which is something that you might end up doing. I'm going to move its position. And I'm going to move it scale down. So I've got this little logo here. Let's make sure we're all okay with that. Misha, can you do, a, do an eyeball scan and make sure nobody's in trouble? I'm in trouble. Okay, George, what you got? Well, I uh, put it on star prompt. You're good. Okay. So, and then now, um, on under, uh, here's what you want to do. Your star prop twirly is closed. So you want to drop down your star uh, crop's oh, twirling. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, and here's the real gotcha for, for you guys. So each um, layer. Each layer has its own secret stuff. Of course. And sometimes they're open, sometimes they're shut, so it can be really confusing. Why would you use the word position when you can just take the arrow and move it? It's a matter of taste. You can do either one. Or yeah, you can just. Size, is that right? I, I get OCD and I go like, oh, I'm only moving on X or I'm only moving but you can just grab that oh, and move it. It's just an OCD thing for me. So yeah, so you can just grab it, Kirk, and move it, and that's great. Okay. Has everybody got him moved down? He's no longer 3D? Okay. So now let's type your business name right here. Okay. Where do you get the text? 
text is with uh, this T tool right here. So we're going to look at text for a second. Now, text is a little bit of a funny thing in After Effects. Let me talk about it with you a little bit. I'm going to remove the one that I just did and, and do it again. I'm going to go to the text tool, and let's look at what we have over here. The, the text tool is ready to go, right? But I've, And I've got two things. This is a very Photoshop and design and illustrating sort of a thing, Illustrator. Um, it's got character and paragraph as two separate dialog boxes, right? Two separate channels, rather. So right now, since my type is going to come out this way, I'm going to select flush left. Okay. So I'm going to hit flush left. And um, I really, sh you know, Melissa will surely get mad at me if I use times in the wrong. Yes. Because <laughs> so I have to find something better. So I'm going to go down here and um, I can, you know, I can act, I can find type this way. So probably a fun way to do it probably would be to type in my business name and click in here and let's see if I was going to move him to He should be updated. But it could be a... Um, you have to select There we go. There we go. So let me, let me point out what I, I did there. Um, I had the font active, right? And now when I double click on the type, now I'm in edit mode. This is very much like Photoshop where um, now I can change like, you know, one letter, right? But if I want to exit out of this mode and, and handle it globally like Misha's pointing out, I can do uh, several different things. One of them is I can hit the enter key on the keyboard and you notice how it went from that little eye beam to the anchors. Once I'm in the anchor, if I click in here in the text, then I can arrow up and down and try different fonts. Make sense? I actually like Bonnie for some reason today. So then I can drag down um, the, the size of the font and I can change the, the type, etc. The type color, etc. Okay. I think I'll make it right. So there, and then now I'm going to make it like this. So, so far so good? So that's type. Type has a lot of great stuff. Um, it does that tracking here, so I could track out my type. Okay, so that all sort of good stuff. There's also um, a stroke on the type, so I could uh, double click on the stroke if I wanted to, and um, you know make a, a width for stroke. Stroke is right here. Okay, I'll hit this, this key right here. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, when you're in text editing, um, when you're in text editing, uh, you get into ex text editing by double clicking on the layer where it says the name of your business. And then, so I'm making uh, character level changes here, right? But if I want to make a global change to all the text on that layer, you either hit the enter key on your numeric keypad or hit the move tool. Either one will work. And then now that I'm there, then I could like make global changes real easy. You know, in other words, not letter by letter, but the whole the whole line. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've uh, I don't know what I've done. But okay, I've let me show you here. Uh, I want to show everybody what George just did because it's really, really common. If I double click on a layer, I'm inside the layer uh, preview panel, not the composition preview panel. So I can simply close that. Okay. Close that. Now I'm back to the comp, right? Gotcha. Okay. Everybody good so far? Anybody? Kirk? Can't grab that thing and oh, um, uh, this guy right here. Enter on the numeric. And then when I go and, over oh, there, here's what's going on. Oh, let me show you. Let me show right. you all what, what Kirk, happened to Kirk is this could happen to you, right? So he's in there and he did what Steve told him to do and then he goes to move it yeah. and then he's back into that. Yeah. Here's, the, here's what happened. We need to go back to the moon. <laughs> probably, probably didn't say that. Yeah. yeah. So there's a whole lot. The of, there's a lot of gotchas about not being in the right tool. Because okay. I'm sure that happened to somebody else. Okay. So. So now you can do this. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I put mine here because we're going to do a little rotation on this type, and we're going to try to uh, run a camera through here. 
and maybe put in some particles. We'll sort of see how we're doing. So we're just already 820. Um, we're going to pre-compose this, these two objects, okay? And um, how we're going to do that is click on both of them together. And um, because they're right next to each other, we could use the shift key or the, um, or the control key. So we have them both selected. So now we're going to go layer precompose. And now this time, because it's not a 3D layer, it's not giving me more choices than I really want to deal with. So it says move all attributes into the new, new composition. We're going to go OK. So now I've got this little comp. See how they're both moving together? You can sort of think of this as a group in a way. It's a group. It's sort of like a nested group. This is called a nest comp or a pre-composition. So, um, let me. Uh, what I want to sort of strive to do is get you real comfortable with like what we really did, right? So, I'm inside this. Now, look what's happening over there. I've got comp and pre-comp. Um, let's see. What did you do? You went with layer, then what? Um, layer pre-composing pre will be pre way down at the bottom. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Got it. So that, you just made a nested comp. And what we should do is is let's name these comps over here so we don't get ourselves in trouble. And um, by the way, in, in 6, um, they, they fixed this little renaming thing where they were, and Gary, if there's, a, if there's a shortcut that I forgot, let me know. Um, they really don't want you to accidentally rename things, and then finally they made it more like normal programs. So I'm just going to go right click on the comp 1 rename, and I'm just going to call that the main comp. And the, the reason I'm sort of doing that is for you as well as for me to remember, well, which one's the main comp and which is the nested comp? It helps you uh, keep that straight. Was that moved? Or was uh, that hit cancel, move Kurt, because um, that, let me make sure you don't have a nested. Are you supposed to move on that? Yeah, we are going to move up. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering why that came up for you. Anyway. Um, and then next one, let's right click, rename that one, and call that logo comp. So I got I got a logo comp and a main comp. Okay. All right. Steve, I get one of nested maybe. I only have one main window and they're both in it. Um, well, you're in the effect control sort of project. Okay. Here's yeah, that's another big gotcha. Is up here is the effect controls and the project. It's really easy to hide your project, and then you're like, well, what the heck happened? There's nothing there. <laughs> It's because it was, it's hiding right so there. Important. And especially if it's moved over like that, it's really easy to not see it. There's this little tiny guy that's an attempt to move it's around there. Two it really is, or at least a higher res one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to carry on here. Um, let's see, we'll do one other thing. Um, so I've got my, let's select our logo comp and let's put one more effect on it. And the only reason we want to do this is we want to lift this out a little bit. So let's put, take the word drop. We're going to drop uh, a drop shadow, no pun intended. We're going to drop the drop shadow onto the comp itself. So I would um, probably drop it right on the layer where it says logo comp. Or you could actually do it there because it, the comp is actually this whole size, even though most of it's got nothing in it. It's just all transparent. But to be sure, I'm going to put it on logo comp. And um, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. So oh, I can see that I am getting some sort of a drop shadow. I don't know. You probably can't see it that well on my screen. But I'll just take um, maybe the softness up a little bit. Now, you notice when you mess with After Effects, when you drag it, it might kind of freak out a little bit, and then when you let go, it'll increase um, its um, clarity or, or resolution. So that's After Effects just trying to catch up with you. And then maybe I'll bring my opacity up a little bit. And I just want to use it to get a little bit of a lift. Um, yeah, so it's nice to pop it out a bit. I'll show you one other trick with After Effects that's, again, done very commonly is duplicating things. So if I might feel like, you know what, I did a, it's a pretty nice drop shadow and my opacity is already all the way up to 61%, but it doesn't look quite as bold as I want. Control D is your friend for sure. And that's just the same thing as um, edit, duplicate, control D. Okay. So I just bought it up twice and you know, I can, I can still, 
you know, I could take the second one and lighten it up and maybe increase the softness or something like that. In other words, I'm just sort of blending effects here, right? And once again, these are working top down. So far, so good. Let's keep moving then. All right. Let's look at this comp. Okay. What I want to do is make this little logo rock from here. I'm going to make it... Um, I'm going to come in on this logo. We're actually going to animate this logo up. I'm going to hold off on that because just because it's getting a little bit later. And we're going to move this logo later and we're going to animate it from this center. So in preparation of that, we want to move the uh, anchor point to as close to the center of the star as we can, okay? So let's do that. Let's hit A for anchor point right there. Just hit the letter A. On the, on the logo comp layer. And now if I if I didn't remember A, I could just drop down the twirly and look for anchor point. There it is right there. And um, here's a way I remember what's X and what's Y and what's Z. Like if I was a fencer, you know, maybe I'd go X, Y, Z. So X is your red horizontal axes. And so I'm gonna take my anchor point and I'm gonna move it this way and I'm just moving it over until I get that anchor point in the middle of that star. I can move in a little bit and then maybe move down the tad. And if it's moving too fast, I can hold the control key. And I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm just trying to get it good enough. So that anchor point's kind of in the middle of that. And you'll see, if you selected your rotation, you'd now be swinging from that, um, that in the middle of that star. I'm going to undo that, but I just want to point out that's why we're doing that. Okay. And then I'm going to move. Now Now that I'm in anchor point, I want to recenter this. So, um, you know, apropos of what, what Kirk was asking before, I, I can just go to the move tool and move them over. Okay. Not, not, not by dragging the anchor point, but by going to the move tool. So that sort of illustrates what the anchor point does versus what the position attribute does. Okay, hit, hit, the, hit the, this key right there. Which one? The tilde key. Yeah. Here's an amazing thing, by the way. <laughs> that um, if I want to see something to the exclusion of all other things, I hit the tilde key. And it gets big. I mean, that, that's really bad right there. That's not a help. But there are times when, like, this gets mammoth and it's going all the way down there. And I just hit that tilde key, which is, like, the key right under the escape. It's actually called the grave key, but the tilde key. Also, the, the term for it. So, um, yeah. So let's. I was going to put some um, particles in here, but let's just try putting the camera in. We need to make um, the logo comp 3D. So let's make not the solid in the bottom, but the logo comp. We're going to make that 3D. And so then, if I selected it, I do have a gizmo, so I'm happy now. And let's go layer. So does everybody have a gizmo in there? Okay. Now the deep so, uh, turquoise solid or whatever your solid is named, that doesn't have to be 3D. That's just going to sit in the background, right? And now we're going to go layer new camera and fiddle around with cameras a little bit. And this, in my mind, is kind of where it gets really fun. I'm going to layer new camera. And we should all be looking at something like this. And so what we're going to really do tonight, it's 8.30 now. Let me do a reassess and see if people can or want to go on more tonight or not. Is there a, like 20 more minutes? Sure. Because I know we all didn't plan on it. You guys might be tired and need to go home or something like that. Melissa, how are you doing? I have 11% left. 11% of the battery? Yeah. Okay, when Melissa's battery's dead, we're all out of here. <laughs> it's all up to your battery. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 11% of what is No, no, it's taking it gets a power down from 100, so. An hour, okay. Oh, yeah. We better hurry up. We've got to pace up our game here. Okay, so I'm going to make sure everybody's with me. Layer, new, camera. We made text, solid, now we're going to make a camera. And wow, this is, is this cool or what? I just love this. There's one node and two co node cameras, and we want a two node camera. Okay, we're actually going to change back to one node, but I want us to get the difference. What's going on with it? And let's take a look. Preset 
let's go to 50 millimeter. 50 millimeter is a really nice camera to work with, whether it's an After Effects camera or an actual real still camera. And I'm going to leave Enable Depth of Field off for now. These are all things sort of to work up to, okay? Look at that. That looks like something from a cartoon, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Then we're going to hit the OK button. And now, things haven't appeared to change, but actually I have a camera here. We're going to just start dropping that down and get acquainted with all the stuff in here. Um, the, just so we know what's kind of ahead of us, so let's just drop that camera option briefly just to sort of see what's going on. Does attributes, all the stuff you'd actually think of in a real camera, and probably even more, like zoom, for example. We left the depth of field off, but if we want to do the rack focus, of course, we'd need that on. The focus distance is totally tied into, uh, or rather, the depth of field is totally tied into the focal distance, as is the blur level. Okay? Then a lot of these other things really get sort of arcane. Um, I'm closing the curly up, and then I'm just looking at transform, and look at this. Not only does it um, not have an anchor point, but it's got something in place of it called the point of interest. And it, also, it does have orientation, which when I first started learning after this, I was totally befuddled by orientation. And if you look at, you can think of it as the direction something's pointed in. That will really help you. So, but we can't really see the camera, which is a problem. By the way, middle mouse button will move this around and zoom will, will pan in and out. And right here, is something that's very handy. Right here is the view size that we're currently looking at. And you notice that Gary often went into 100% often to see what his true pixels were looking like. Uh, if you hit fit up to 100%, that's often like a really handy view to look at. Um, what we want to do is see two views. And in my mind, this is really critical for understanding cameras and almost anything that you're trying to move around in 3D. So over here, Look at this, we've got active camera, which is what we're looking through, and it also says one view, okay? So let's just explore what we have. If I drop down active camera, I can see, oh, look at that. I can get a front view, or a top view, or a left view, plus a custom view. These are all really neat. Well, I'll, right now I'll tell you, top view is an extremely useful view. So, but over here, I don't want to be going top view, yeah, that's neat and everything, but I now where my other view go, here's the way to do this. Go back to active camera, and where it says one view, select two views horizontal. Let me know if I'm, if I'm speeding it up too much, because I, I could do that. I don't want to do that, I want to go at a good pace. So um, I've got a top view, and I know that's currently the active view because of these little tiny um, triangles here. And that one also has my transparency on. So I look, there's my top view. It doesn't look like much, does it? And there's my, um, there's my active camera view. So keep in mind, the one that's active is always the one that's got the highlight, the little tiny corners, you know, like those little pictures, you know, the old days with picture books. So these are yellow. These little tiny corners. I don't know what they're called. In, in little family photo books, they hold pictures. But anyway, um, that tells me which one's active. Okay, now, why does this look so weird? Because After Effects is really two and a half dimensions. It doesn't have true depth. Okay, I'm going to show you something where I fake depth before we leave tonight. Um, but really, this type is that thin. <laughs> it really has no thickness. It's really just a representation. And I want to drag, spin back out a little bit. I see this little tiny sad box over here. And that little guy is my camera. Okay. Now the problem is, I'm going to want to move around and see what happens when I move that camera. And I want to, I want to have that camera always be on. Like you see, if I move off of it, now the camera is gone. I always want to see the camera. So how we do that is, this is a very common Adobe thing, by the way, is every panel has these little tiny panel properties drop down. Right? You see them all over. They're like ubiquitous. You know, you start seeing them everywhere. You ever like need to buy a car or something and you see the model you want everywhere? Well, that's what this is like. So I'm going to drop down here and go to View Options and we want to set wireframe for the camera to always on. Let me make sure everybody can find that. I've got the top view on. I've got look at a little view option. We're going to go to View Options here. So this is the, the, the panel options, really. Then the view option for the panel. And then right here we have to go 
camera wireframe, not just when I select it, I need to see it on all the time, right? Because that's, that's critical to see that. And now, even though it's unselected, I, I see it. I mean, it does a little bit more. So it shows us its a point of interest. But um, basic idea is I can see this. So what, what this is going to allow me to do is to see how this thing works. If I drag the camera, I've got this kind of action. And what's called the point of view, or that second node, moves with the camera. Okay, I'm going to control Z. That. I'm doing a lot of doing and then I'm doing. So basic idea is I drag on X and the camera and its point of view moves. So Joe, that would be called a, a truck, right? I think it's a truck shot where something just goes like that. Is that right? It's just like, you know, everything is moving rigidly. But if I hold control down and drag um, the X, I've got something else. I've got it. I don't know. I guess you sort of call it some sort of an orbit. It's or called something. a nodal point pan. Thank you. Cool. Very cool. Good. It's a nodal Ooh. point pan. Because the node is staying where it is in the pan. That's right. I learned that in film 101 at UG. <laughs> I, don't, years ago. I don't have a point of interest. <laughs> what, me? I don't have a point of interest. Let me show you what's going on. Undo so your camera's straight, right? Or you can also, also hit reset on your camera, and that'll get it right back. And, um, your name's Chris, you're Chris, right? Right. Okay, Chris, what you're gonna do, so Chris doesn't have the point of view, so he's gonna go back to, with the camera layer set, go layer camera settings, and then you can go back and pick two node camera. Okay. All right, so we're doing pretty good, so we can track, or we can, and then do the nodal, whatever Kirk said. The nodal point, 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 but does it remember yeah. all my keyframes from the start? No, because we didn't actually keyframe. We're going to have to keyframe like really soon. Okay. Now let's let me show you the other. So now, so you have a basic understanding of that. Let's go to um, let's make our top view a left view, and just look at you know doing the same sort of thing where you then can control key, and then now you can like look look down and up, you know, that way. I'm going to do that also, and then I'm going to go back to the top view. Okay. Now, let's let's get some keyframes in before we conclude tonight. Um, let's go back to our camera and change it to um, Chris back to what you had a one node camera. And let's take this camera and maybe move them over here. We're just going to track in and then move forward. We're going to maybe at the next meeting add more type and some particle effects and stuff like that. But I, I just want to put, I want to start my animation with nothing, okay? We'll actually put some particles in, as I say, so it's not really nothing, but just to give us a start. And now what we really need to do is um, start keyframing the camera, right? So I'm going to like put a um, position and orientation keyframe at zero. Okay, so I took a position. And the rotation keyframe at zero. Make sure that's all I need. And how I did that is I hit these little stopwatches right here. Okay. Those little stopwatches. Okay. And then I'm going to move forward to um, a second. Okay. So let's, now we're going to now we're getting into animation. I'm also going to throw in this thing called the the integrated camera before we go. So yeah, um, see my timeline? This is called the CTI, current time indicator, or the timeline slider. If you want to send, no, be sure you're at zero, just hit the home key and you're at zero. Yeah, and, and by the way, this whole timeline here, see this, this little zoom right here? So I can zoom in and out there. Also, plus and, your plus and minus keys also zooms in and out. We're going to talk more about this uh, the next meeting. This is like a a work area here, there's a little navigator here, and there's a little navigator here. And probably the best way to work right now is just to use this little navigator here in the bottom, and then you can also move around here, this little slider. Hope, hope you can all see that behind me. There's a little, there's a little, little tiny slider here, and then there's like a, a, um, a larger scroll bar to the right of that. Can you all see that okay? okay. So what we want to do is, I keyframe position orientation by hitting these little stopwatches, and then I want to move out to a second. So I'm just dragging my timeline, and it should say zero one second. And I can so here, but I can also see it there. 
one second. So the same deal here is if I just click in there and say 100 in a tab, my timeline will go right to one second. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move over on Y like that. And I can see I didn't really need that orientation keyframe. So I'll show you how to get rid of that. You're just going to click on the stopwatch, and the orientation keyframe is actually gone. So now what I have are the, um, is the trajectory for this camera. So I'm, I'm moving from here to here. Okay? So we're just going to do one animation on this guy and then move the camera back in space. Okay? So far, so good. Everybody with me? Anybody give, just given up? Okay. Okay. So, so I got the camera moving in here, and then I'm going to move the camera on on two seconds. Then I'm going to move that camera forward on Z. So I'm just dragging it on Z. So I've got one second down, and then back down again. So I've got like um, over on um, X. And then down on Z. Now let me show you what's going on here in this um, top view. I got a lot of little weird things going on here, right? I can change the the trajectory by moving these little handles here. Okay. So I'm not stuck with this trajectory. And these little handles are kind of small. You see these little Bezier curves? Um, who who gets Bezier curves from um, Illustrator and that sort of thing? Melissa, anybody else? Yeah. So you, the guys that are used to be Bezier curves love them. People that are new, it's a new thing. Um, in After Effects, if you go Edit, I just want to point out, if you go Edit Preferences General, um, you can make the size of, they call it the path point size, but they really are handles, right? I'm going to make mine, like, really big so you guys can see them, okay? See how big they are now? So you can make that curve, because it's a little weird for it to kind of go back and then forward. It's just an interpolation. So you could do something like that to kind of make your curve a little bit more elegant. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so I've got this camera coming in. And what I want to do is I want to do something kind of cool where as I move in, the Deep 4D logo comes up like a little door, right, like a hinge. So I'm going to go back to one second. And I'll give you a tip, by the way, if you hold the Shift key, you'll pop to the nearest keyframe, which is extremely useful in animation. Probably a good time to Command S or Control S right now. So does everybody have a um, camera move, something like that? OK, we're going to go to that one second point again, Shift key to pop to that keyframe. And now I want to keyframe my D4D composition. Now, just because real estate is kind of shy right here, right? I'm going to close up my twirly for the camera. I'm going to say for tonight I'm done with the camera. And then drop down the logo comp twirly and see the transforms. Now, I could have been lazy and probably a lot more conscientious of space if I selected the logo comp layer and hit R. And then I'm going to see my rotation values for, the, for this layer. And what I'm going to be doing is um, rotating on X. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. At one second, Click an orientation keyframe by clicking on the little stopwatch. Move forward to two seconds, so I can just type 200 right here and hit enter. And then move that um, orientation on up to, I don't know, let's just say 270. Or anything to be high enough so it kind of moves forward. So I've got, so I've got my camera coming in, and boop, now I'm going to come through. And what we would be doing is showing a reveal of some type. What we'll do next meeting, if you guys are up for it, is we'll have um, some out of focus stuff in a distance coming into focus with some particles, and then we'll have the zoom coming in with like depth and a blur. But that was that was a lot, and um, you know you got a good start on After Effects. Now you could play, and and so we um, imported a graphic, we set some type, we did a ramp on a solid layer, um, we did a drop shadow, we did a pre comp, we did a one node and a two node camera. And we animated orientation and camera moves, so that's a good start for one evening. Okay. Any questions come up? When you're moving it around, what do you do to stop backtracking the trajectory or messing with it? 
Yeah. Um, one, one kind of. Talking about the camera. Yeah, because I'm moving it around, and it's not like I haven't committed this. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Chris, that's a very good point. As soon as you move, as soon as, anywhere when you move, if I move the camera now, I'm going to be adding another keyframe. Right. So. Um, I just mean when I want to review the course of the um, trajectory, it seems to like be undoing the trajectory. Or... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, 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 I know. In other words, is the trajectory it's, removing it's okay. itself? Yes. Okay, yes. let me tell you, let me show you exactly. I know what you're talking about. Edit, um, has anybody else had that problem? Yes. Yeah, okay, edit preferences, general, bear with me while I find it. There's a setting to say how many frames do you want your trajectory to exist, and, it, and the setting is very low by default. Um, previews, um, let's see, display. Okay, it's edit preferences display, and motion path, uh, set it to all keyframes just to make it easy. Did you find that, Chris? All keyframes on motion Yeah, try path. that, and then go okay. And you might need to wiggle your timeline a little bit for it to work up. <coughs> Is there a button to set keyframes? Yeah, there is a button right here. There's an auto keyframe um, uh, button. Okay. But in general, like if I take anything, see, check this out. See, as soon as I add a value, once I have, once I, the way it works is this. And all animation tools are slightly different um, in how you make the first keyframe. So the first keyframe in After Effects, you click that. Once you've done that, every time you move and change that value, it will automatically add another keyframe. See what I mean? It's an automatic sort of a thing. So if you if you order now if you make a keyframe accidentally, you can always see over here this little tiny guy. Sometimes I move this guy over here because it's like more convenient. If I want to remove that keyframe, I click that, and that keyframe's gone. If you want to navigate from keyframe to keyframe, you go J and K. And for Mac also. Yep, same thing for Mac. There's also, also these little tiny buttons right there. Cool. Okay. Well, it's 10 to 9. How's your battery doing? <laughs> Just died? Yeah. Perfect, Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Okay, so we didn't exactly do rack focus, um, but we'll get that to that next time. But we did control the camera. Not with a null, though, but at, I think if we do that part next time, you guys are for coming, um, then you'll have so much more knowledge to actually work with it. It'll actually be more meaningful. So, any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the topic. We're going to um, plan out another meeting. I don't know whether it's going to be here or Austin School of Film or not. Um, we're going to kind of find out. Um, we're really keen on, on developing this. Uh, we really want your input on the group. So if you guys stop by, I know Melissa's done this, for example. Just If you have any comments, just throw them out there. Even any ideas for future things to do, um, we're all about hearing what you guys want, want to do, especially projects, So because we all need stuff to work on. Thanks a lot. I really learned about Mocha. I really oh, learned about I was always like, I don't want to, I can't do that. Now I now I know it. Now I feel like I can do it. Oh, and I can see why it's so much better than Oh, you just gave me a couple of tips of that. Like, you want us to log so on. Oh, um, so that would be good. Just exit, file, and then over here. And if you guys want to save this file, bring it on home. Unless you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. I was on your call, so I couldn't be here at the beginning, so I apologize. I did want to at least stop that video.